Now in the Middle East, video blogs are being used to get a different kind of message out. MSNBC's Tony Masillis is here with us in the studio with more about this. Hi there, Tony. Hey there, Natalie. Well, as you know, video blogs are the latest craze in the whole blog phenomenon. And the mainstream media, as you mentioned, has already made use of it. Chris Matthews, for example, from Hardball has his own video blog. But now... A government, the Israeli government, has actually made use of this technology and has launched a video blog in order to spread some positive images of the nation. The aftermath of a bombing in Israel. These are the only images of the Middle East that many people ever see. With the help of a video blog, the Israeli government wants to change that. We wanted to create a platform for Israelis to share with other people in the world their talent, their creativity, their lifestyle. And therefore, we thought that through the blog, we can do it the best way. The Israeli consulate is inviting both amateurs and professionals to submit video to the website. It's the first official government video blog, but it's not the first time web users have gotten a glimpse of life in that troubled region. Israelis and Palestinians have both made use of the web. When I lived in Palestine in 1994, there were only 30 Palestinian websites, so there was a massive explosion over the next few years. And literally over the course of a couple of years, it went, the number rose to about 200 websites. Years of conflict have taken their toll on tech advances in the region, but there is still a web presence. When the Israeli settlers left Gaza in an historic pullout last year, the Internet buzzed with activity. At the website Rafa Pundits, stories of celebrations among the Palestinians claiming Gaza as their home. And at Israeli blogs, tales of searching for new homes in other parts of the country and spending nights in hotel rooms in Jerusalem. These blogs help other nations learn a bit more about the situation, but they could also foster a dialogue among the Israelis and the Palestinians. Young people are open to create relationship with other people on the other side and I think through the internet it's the best medium because then people can talk directly with each other. Peace isn't made on the White House lawn, it's made by normal people living together. Where diplomacy has failed, some feel technology could provide a new age tool for an age-old problem. This is a, obviously a great effort on the part of the Israelis, but what about the Palestinians? Are there really that many Palestinians who are online? Well, you know, the Israelis obviously have the clear advantage in terms of access to technology, but in fact, there are a growing number of Internet cafes in Ramallah, and people, Palestinians are using those in order to get online. They very much want their message to be heard as well. Tony Masillas, thank you, Tony. Very interesting story.